Hello my dear YouTuber friends and I do hope you're all keeping well. Welcome to this new video. Following on from my Back to Basics lesson on ADF NDB navigation that was in the Cessna 152 with analog displays, I'm going to show you how you can do ADF NDB navigation in glass cockpits or the G1000 aircraft like the Cessna 172 here actually makes the whole thing a breeze to do. It's a lot easier to do in glass cockpit displays aircraft like the Cessna 172. And I'm also going to show you at the end of this video, stay tuned for that, the September winner for the screenshot of the month. I've got a competition running on Discord, but we'll get to that later. Listen, let's not dilly-dally any longer. Let's get on with the video. Okay, so for this lesson, I'm going to start off at Manchester Airport, EGCC, runway 23 right. So let's get into the aircraft. Let me just switch you to little nav map. There we go. I'll get to little nav map myself. There's an NDB close to Manchester Airport, but just zoom out a bit. It's this one here, Whitegate. As you can see, that's 368.5. We'll be entering that into the ADF in a moment in the Cessna 172. That's the first NDB we'll be heading towards. If you're unsure about what NDBs and ADF is, go and look at that video that I linked at the beginning of this video. I go into more depth. But I'm just going to show you how you would do this in gla glass cockpits displayed aircraft. There you go. The view keeps resetting, don't worry about that. It's just a little nav map. So white gate there, that's the first one we're heading to. If we zoom out a little bit more, we can see Welshpool Airport. We're going to head towards that. Now if I zoom into Welshpool, there's an NDB, which will guide us straight towards that runway 22 there. There's the NDB. Click on that. You can see the frequency for that is 323. I've made a note of this myself. You can make a note if you want to. If we lock onto that NDB, it will guide us straight towards runway 22. So that's what I'm... That's the basically the flight plan I'm taking. Let's get into the cockpit. First thing I'll do is press my B key. Seems after sim update 10 that the altitude, the altimeter, is already correct when you spawn on an airport. So your altitude above sea level seems to be correct more often. Actually, I've not come across a case since sim update 10 where I've had to update that. So that's great. Well, that's my experience anyway. So how do we enter ADF when in glass cockpit displays? Very simple. There's an ADF DME button here. Let's click that. It will bring up a box. And you can see that's the active ADF. And that's the standby. And you can see it's flashing. To alter these digits, use your outer knob to the G1000. The outer knob here on the FMS controls. Move that up once. And it will go to the first digit. Now that's right. We want to keep that as, as zero. Use the inner knob to go to the next digit. And that that's correct as well. Three. So the outer knob to go to the next digit. We want to change this to six. So I'm just mousing down on the outer knob to the unit. Inner knob to go to the next digit. Three, six, eight. Uh, I'll go down, mouse down to get to eight. It's difficult to see unless you really zoom in there. I'm having difficulty anyway. Get to the digit after the decimal in a knob. And we want to change that to 0.5. As you can see, it's easier to do with the digits after the decimal in the glass cockpit displays. Makes ADF navigation a lot easier with the G1000. Once you've got your first NDB entered, press your enter button. The whole thing will flash. It's saying enter to transfer, so enter again. That's now your active ADF. Another thing we can do in the G1000 is go... I'm going to keep this box up. You can hide it if you want to by pressing ADF again. But I'm going to keep it up because I'm going to enter the second ADF when we're up in the air. So I'll keep it nice and handy there. Click your P PFD options here. 
click on bearing one and a couple more times until you see ADF comes up here. When that ADF comes into range of our aircraft, when it can actually the aircraft can actually see it, you will see that it will highlight here and it will let you know that you've locked onto it. Another thing I'd like to do, and it's recommended if you're flying NDF or if you're doing ADF NDB navigation, is turn your Morse cold frequency on, and that's this button in the Cessna 172 ADF. Now I've found, let me just go to options here and general options and sound if you want to hear the morse code you've got to have your warnings turned all the way up i found or have it high anyway i've got mine set to 100 percent turn your engines down because the engines will drown out the uh morse code otherwise so i've got my engines on 44 and warnings on 100 of course you'll get the nagging with the warnings so you'll see that later no doubt Okay, I've got all, all that set. I'm going to set my altitude in this case to 1,800. I want to be a, as high as I can for the second NDB. As you'll see later, the range of the NDBs is not as good as VORs. So if you get high, if you get reasonably high, you've got a better chance of actually picking up the NDB. Anyway, I'll show you that later. We'll keep it on GPS here. I'm just going to sync the heading heading bug as well just because I'm going to go into heading mode when I take off. Listen, we're all set why not just get up in the air and get going with this interestingly I'm getting a lot of torque to the right there, it's usually to the left but in this case to the right Ooh, let's come back down and be yep, that's fine Keep yourself pretty much on the centre line there. Up in the air we go. And just trim out. So centre my controls. Trim out. That'll do. I'm going to go straight into autopilot and heading mode. Hope you can hear that. So there's a Morse code for the first NDB. If we come down to this display now, you should see here... Uh, it's locked on to that 368.5 ADF, so that's handy, unless you double check that you're locked onto it. It's telling us the uh, bearing for that is 232, which we're on in heading mode, so that's fine. So we're heading straight towards that NDB. We can actually tune in and put it on standby, the second NDB, which is Welsh Poo, which is 323. So again... Move your outer knob to the unit to get to the first digit. Inner knob to go to the first digit, or the second digit rather. I'm just going to change that to three. Inner knob to get to the next digit, three. Two. Inner knob. Three. Right, 323, that's Welsh Pool NDB. Press enter. I'm not going to transfer it yet because we're way too far. I can show you. If I transfer it, it's not going to pick it up. We're way too far away from that NDB. Let's put it back on our first NDB, which we're still saying the range now. The bearing is 323. No, it's going back to 232. We'll keep it there. We seem to be heading straight towards it. And we're getting up to our altitude as well we'll be at 1800 before you know it we'll just throttle back a little bit now we're getting there as well so we don't over rev the engine now then we're heading straight towards that ndv okay there's a bit of a way to go so that won't take too long but we've got some distance there's manchester behind us sim update 10 now i've had to lower it had an adverse effect. I'm using a 3060 RTX laptop. And I was getting really good frames before the update. After the update, it's lowered my frame rate, maybe by up to 10 frames. It seems, I'm not going to do it now, but they're going to develop a mode. The main thread of the CPU seems to be holding me back. 
That's an i5, can't remember the megahertz. It's a decent i5 in the laptop, but it is a laptop i5, not the best of the best. I've had to lower some settings. I'm still getting 40 ish frames. It's put it on in 1080p. It's not. Yeah, I'm still playing around with that. Even though I've lower settings, I've got to say, now it may be a placebo effect. To me, the sim looks a lot better. I've also got DL, DLSS enabled as well. Generally, it looks better, even though I've lowered a couple of settings. Still got the clouds on high. It's definitely the clouds look better, <laughs> without a doubt. But even the scenery seems to be improved as well. It's just had an adverse effect. What are yours? I know in the Discord a lot of people have had... Let's just fossil back a bit. Have had improvements with Sim Update 10. Unfortunately with me, that's not so much the case in terms of frame rate. Still playing around with settings. The main thread seems to be holding me back and I'm not sure quite sure. I've not got to the bottom of that yet. But listen, as, as long as you're getting over 30 frames in, in a flight sim, it's fine. You can see now the bearing is saying th 2, 3, 4, so I'm just going to change my heading bug to 2, 3, 4, 2, 3, 3 now. Yeah, 2, 3, 4. That's fine. Just to head straight towards that NDB. Hopefully you can still hear the Morse code going off there. Just gonna see with my little nav map how far. Yeah, still got a little bit of a distance to go. What we're gonna do, chaps, is fly straight towards that NDB. Now you'll see once we reach this first NDB, we're still gonna be too far away from the Welsh Pool NDB, even though I'm at 1,800 feet to pick it up. The range of NDBs is not great. So I'm going to track this current NDB away. Once we pass through it, you'll see that blue... Sorry, I didn't mention that. That blue triangle here on the GPS is your NDB heading. That's You want that arrow there heading straight upwards. That means you're heading straight towards it. You can double check and reference that with the bearing to the NDB. Same 235 now, so I'll just change that. Two, three, six. Once we get closer, you will notice this will start to become a little bit beninicky, uh, a little bit temperamental. I'm gonna keep changing. I'm not gonna keep changing it once we get closer because you'll be just changing it forever. As long as you're heading t somewhat straight towards that arrow there. Once we pass through it, you'll see that arrow will spin behind us, and I'm gonna track away from it until I can pick up the Welsh Pool NDB. Again, if I switch to Welsh Pool, it's not going to pick up yet. We're way too far away from it. So let's switch back to our first, our White Gate uh, NDB. But as you can see, generally, it's a lot easier to do this in the Cessna 172. Now, you can see that range is changing again. The bearing, rather. So I'm just going to change my bearing to 237. As we get closer, you'll see that number change quite a lot, so I won't keep trying to follow it. We are very close to that NDB now, so you'll see that number, the bearing here, will keep changing in a moment. I'm just going to stick to where we are. The arrow is pointing straight up, so it's changed again, but it will do as you get closer to it. A bit more view, it definitely looks like there's an improvement after some update 10, no doubt. It's a lot nicer. It's just unfortunate. I was one of the unfortunate ones where I, I had an adverse effect, basically. But there you go. What can you do? So there you go, we're heading... So it's, but the bearing's changing again. Yeah, pretty much nearly on top of it. So, it won't be long. So we passed over the NDB. You'll see this blue arrow here. Yeah, you can see it's already de deflecting. This will come right behind us. I 
just change our bearing to match that just so we are going to pass now. You can see it's changing quite a lot now, so I'm not going to keep following it. I've got my heading mould on. My bearing for my heading mould is 239. I'm going to keep it there. You're going to see this number keep increasing now because we're just about to pass over the top of that NDB. And the useful thing in the glass cockpit display is G1000. You get wonderful symmetry here. Well, wonderful readings and it really lets you know where you are in relation to that NDB. Passing over the top, this will swing behind us. Let it come behind us. When I switch to that uh, Welsh Pool NDB, you can still see we're going to be too far away from it. There you go, this is coming behind us, so we've passed over it. It's now behind us, the NDB, the White Gate NDB. So we'll keep heading in that general direction for now. If I switch to that Welsh Pool NDB, we're still too far, we're not picking it up, so I'm going to track this white gate NDB and switch back to it out for now. Now, because we're in the G1000, what we can do is reference our second screen, our right screen, and the Welsh Pool uh, code will be EG... let's see, EGCW. EGCW, so I can range out on this map here. Why not take advantage of the tools in the G1000? So if I change my bearing to head towards here, which is the Welsh, this is our destination basically. And the range of that, if I change my heading mode to about 212, just bank left basically, to about 212 bearing. We should be pretty much heading towards Welsh Pool. And I just want to double check. That's why I've entered the NDB. I can fly this way, but I'd rather follow the NDB for Welsh Pool because that's going to take us directly to the airport. It's going to be more accurate. But because we're here, we've got the G1000s, we've got this handy map on this screen. There you go. We can head straight towards EGCW Welsh Pool until we can pick up that NDB. Can we pick it up yet? Probably not. From trying this before, once we get to this river, I'll just pass it. That's the range we can pick it up, the NDB. So you can see the range of the uh, these NDBs are not great. You can use them for navigation, and I'm doing that here. Certainly around the UK, the NDBs are all over the place. So you can do NDB ADF navigation purely if you want to fly that way, you just sometimes have to track away from the NDB you were first following to pick up the second one and reference your maps. If you're going to be flying anyway, you're likely to have maps and with the G1000 you've got this handy map, of course. So it's not cheating in any way. Okay, another thing I want to talk about here is the, let's just see, oh, uh, the shorts. Now, if you've not seen my recent shorts, the first short I've put up, YouTube short, don't worry chaps, I mean my videos are generally going to be in-depth guides like this one. It's going to be more than a minute, minute long. So the shorts, every now and again, when I've just got a simple tip, I'll put it up as a short, every now and again. If I can get maybe over the next year five or six shorts, maybe. Maybe. It depends if I've got a tip. I'm not going to make a habit of them, so don't worry. But do let me know your thoughts. If you've not seen it, go and watch it. Let me know your thoughts on it. I'd be interested to know. I know some people don't like them, and some people don't mind them. Uh, just gonna Because of the nature of flight sim, I can't do many of them anyway. And I'm not just going to put a simple short out for no reason. It's got to be meaningful. So don't worry if you don't like them, it's not going to become a habit, just every now and again. Shall we switch to that NDB to see if we can pick it up? No, we can't, so we're going to keep tracking that other NDB away. We're still in range of Whitegate. Was it Whitegate? Yep, yeah, Whitegate NDB. We're tracking away from it at the moment. And like I said, once we get to around this river here, just over it, we can pick up the Welsh Pool NDB. 
off so I can see any names that we know. Tango 2-2, two -two. no. Thought I recognised the name, but I do. Flying, of course, in a different part of the country here. In the north, where I'm originally from. And look at that, the graphics definitely look improved from sub of then prior to sim update 10. Sim update 10 basically has improved the graphics, no doubt. Looks a lot prettier, a lot more well defined. It's not happy, uh, thought it would improve my frame rates, and it's not. But I'll get to the bottom of it, hopefully. How are we doing? We're approaching this river now. I'm just going to check my little nav map. Uh, don't worry, I won't keep switching you. Yeah, I can see we're still some distance from Welsh Pool. And we're actually getting to the point where we'll lose the uh, Morse code from the Whitegate NDB as well. Once we cross that river, we should be fine. No, it's one of two artifacts. I don't know if anybody else. This could be the DLSS in play. Uh, one or two little artifacts that I'm knocking. Like, just could be because of propellers. There. I see some shimmering in the clouds ahead there. And every now and again, I do get shimmering as well. But I do believe that's DLSS. Generally, yeah, quite happy with the way it looks. Anyway, we'll keep going on about that. How are we doing? Can we pick it up? Let's try. Nope, as you can see. I'm going to keep it on because I'm heading towards Welsh Pool anyway. I'm going to keep it on the Welsh Pool NDB. And once we hear the Morse cold, we know we're locked onto it. So we're just approaching that river there. Get outside and see that. Whatever it is. Any second that should pick up. Let's get back to our top menu. Once I've picked up, I'm going to hide this ADF box because we'll be finished with it. I'm not going to turn ADF off, I'm just going to hide this box. We won't need it up once we get within range of it. Any second. Come on. Oh, any moment. Just passing over that line. This is generally where I pick up the Welsh Pool NDB. It does work. I've got the right code set in. Yep, just double checking everything. 323. Three. Any second survey flying. In this sort of direction, you're flying using ADF NDB navigation. Your other controls, your GPS, it's not working. Things have gone funny with the G1 files. There we go, it's picked it up. You can do NDB flying, it will guide you there. Saying the range to it, the bearing to it is 210, so I'll just change my bearing to 210. That's the heading bug number. And we're heading straight towards Welsh Pool. I can hide that box. And continue on. Listen, chaps, what I shall do, I shall cut the video here. When I get closer to Welsh Pool, I'll bring you back. And okay, we're getting a lot closer now to Welsh Pool. Not too far away. I've just decreased my altitude to 1600. I want us to be about 1400 on approach to Welsh Pool. There you go, that's where we are, that's our aircraft, that's Welsh Pool, so we're not too far away. You can still hear the NDB, the ADF frequency, the Morse code frequency, so we're still locked on. You can see down here, now he wants us to go to 211, that's fine. I want to keep that accurate, because that's going to take us straight towards the runway 22 at Welsh Pool. And see, just to our right here will be Wales, 
hills and mountains there. Must do more flying in Wales and Ireland. I've done a lot of flying, some live streams, obviously around the UK, uh, sorry, England and Scotland. But not so much in Ireland. Well, we did the Queen's uh, tribute flight. Uh, not to fly through Wales. Wales looks pretty nicer. I could fly through that and Ireland looks nice as well. As I lived in Ireland for a number of years, it's only right I do a few flights there. So you can expect that coming up. And of course, next live stream chaps. Uh, I aim to do that within the next couple of weeks. Uh, but yeah, expect ADF to be in there. Maybe a bit of BOR, you know, usual stuff. You know my live streams. <laughs> so get to grips with ADF, it's pretty easy. And I may do something, I may switch things up. I'll leave that as a surprise for the moment. May switch things up a little bit in the next live stream as well. Do something quite different. Something I've not seen done before in other live streams. So that should be, yeah, we'll see. Anyway. Within the next couple of weeks, I'll be trying to do another live stream with you chaps. So they're quite enjoyable. Of course, you got Mark's live stream next week, isn't it? I think it's next weekend. Uh, so, yeah. Got some Mark's Simhanger server for details of that. Always good fun to fly and to watch. I generally watch them because I'm usually working when he does a live stream. And when I come home, I'm a bit tired to do a couple two or three hour live stream but good fun to watch great way to relax as well and I did join the last one the Spitfire one and that was good fun anyway we should see runway 22 at Welshpool should see it coming up ahead of us at some point once we get past these hills, basically, we should see. I don't have... See, I don't always fly with airport markers. I don't have airport markers on. I know a lot of people don't like them. It's useful if you're not sure of an area. You need to know where an airport is. Typically, when I'm live streaming, I'll put them on just so I guide you in the right direction. But when I'm not live streaming I will always have them on just to increase the realism so runway 22 let me know down below do you have airport markers on generally or not I'm okay with them either way just like I said increases the realism with them off now how far are we away we're not that far away from Welshpool Heading towards. Let's just come down to this display. 214 now. Let's just change our bearing just to make sure we're properly lined up with runway 22. Uh, two. Should be there. Anyway, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to decrease my altitude again in preparation for it. Uh, to 1400. Heat, that should be fine. I'm just going to bring back my throttle slightly as well. I know it's not too far ahead of us now. There we go. Now I do have a large monitor beside me. I don't have it switched on. It would be useful at the moment. It's a lot easier to see things. I'm trying to get close to my laptop screen, which is not the biggest. I think that's the runway right there. So we should be okay. Just bring down my speed now. It's about 1900, sub 1900. Keep the ADF frequency on. So that's the way you should be doing ADF NDB navigation. Follow the Morse code all the way in just to make sure that you are fully locked on. That's the runway right ahead of us. So just come to my... I, need, I can see I need to come to my right slightly. Speed's coming down. Should be no problem. We should be at flaps, stage one flap speed in just a moment. We're nearly there anyways. I can put it to stage one flaps. It's fine. And 
I'll soon take it off. Autopilot to land at this runway. Why not take it off now? There we go. Just make sure my trim wheel is behaving. It's not too bad. There we are. There we are. Yeah, oh, I guess. Oh, well. Maybe I'll save that discussion. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Ignore that I was about to say something. It doesn't matter. I'm going to prep for landing here. There we go. Runway straight ahead of us. Get a better view of my controls there. Yeah, pretty much on a good profile. Do you want to go to stage two flaps? Check out that they have deployed. They have. Just to control the aircraft that little bit better and just line up for this runway. Don't need to worry about the bearing now. I can see the runway ahead of me. That's where I want to land, of course. There are no problems. Seems to be good on a good profile there. Just decrease my speed a tad there. There you go. The problem is when you turn warnings up, you'll get that nagging Betty, they call it in jet fighters, I believe. Is it nagging Betty or moaning mini? I don't know. <laughs> uh, so you'll be warned about altitude and goodness knows what, and you know, if you're flying above flap speed, it will tell you to uh, increase your altitude. Or don't sink, rather. So if you're not flying ADF, maybe turn the warnings down if you don't like it. Which is what I normally do. There we go. Doing well there. Decrease my throttle a little bit more just to line up with the threshold there. And we're doing well. And throttle and yoke control now. No problem. No problem. And we'll just land about here. There's a lot of talk to the right again. But we'll come off to the right anyway. There we go. And you know what, parking brake's fine there. Keep the moss cold running, why not? So there you go, chaps. Now, normally I'll say give the video a like. Do give it a like if it's been helpful. Subscribe for more. But we now we're going to go to our competition, our screenshot of the month, which I'm running on Discord. Let's go to that now. Okay, so screenshot of the month competition. At, begin at the beginning or middle of September, I when was it, the 12th of September, I opened up this new channel on the Discord. If you've not joined Discord, anybody's welcome. PC and Xbox uh, flyers, come along, join in. Take part in this screenshot of the month competition. I'm going to be giving out prizes each month. I mean, coming up to Christmas, so there may be a special prize coming up there. Now, as you can see, there's various different screenshots. One more way, posted one there, lovely. And then Disco Day, very nice ones there. And another one there. And Rosson, of course. He does some fantastic screenshots. One there. I know you can go and take a look at this yourself. Bob, Dr. Ocularei there. Lovely rainbow. Where was that? An Oz rainbow, lovely. And I contributed myself. I'm not taking part in the competition. I just like the green hues around there and Rossen again there and Wombleway another one there and a few more as you can see and then this gets into October now that'll be for next month by the way I picked a few that I like it's basically now which one was that was that from Pigs Fly yeah it was and this one's from, let me just refresh my memory, from Wombleway. And one from Rossen. These are the three that I thought were outstanding, the most outstanding. Lovely one there from Pig's Fly. I do love that sunrise, I think it is. Lovely. Lovely uh, reflections and lights going on there. Wombleway, lovely. I do like this, this light across here and that angle. The clouds there, it looks lovely. But the winner is going to be Rossen here. I just love this one. The reflections in the aircraft here and the scenery at the back. and It's just beautiful. The light playing on the rings there. I just think this one was fantastic. So Rossen, well done. You are a 
first screenshot of the month winner. Now, I said this would be a trial run, but I'm going to change things up here for September. Rossen, if there's any subjects you would like me to cover in more depth, let me know via Discord. Uh, if there's a subject that I've not done yet, you want me to make a video on, on it, a future video, or a, a subject I've already covered, you want me to go into more depth, let me know, I'll make a video on it. And there'll be more prizes coming, things like vouchers, like I said, even better, Christmas is on its way, so enter anybody able to enter this competition. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on the video, guys. Give it a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe for more, and I'll be seeing you soon.